Jen is your typical straight A student, even geography with Mrs. Dotson, which Jenna finds as interesting as a loaf of bread. Jenna likes sports and theater. For the past three years, she's gotten the lead role in her school plays, which have included Dorothy, Cinderella, and Marley's Ghost from A Christmas Carol. Boo! All right, this thing on. Okay, guys, tell us what you're doing. Now is the dramatic chase scene. <laughs> Jenna lives on 1300 Baker Street. A sycamore tree hangs over a pond in the backyard. When she was younger, her favorite pastime involved her sidewalk, some chalk, and drawings of old Mr. Carter, who lived across the street. Her dad works at a bank. All right. Looks like we're ready to go. OK. And her mom is a part-time teacher's assistant. Everyone say cheese. Cheese. They own a dog named Blue, who Jenny used to ride when she was six. In recent years, this has gotten harder for Blue. Best dog ever. One of Jenna's favorite memories is the smell of her mother's flowers. Hey, Mom, what you doing? Oh, I'm just working on my flowers over here. Jenna loves her mom. <laughs> Jenna loves her dad. This is Jenna. But Jenna feels like she's drowning. Jenna's just trying to keep her head above water, just gasping for air. Dad has been coming home from work angrier and angrier. Mom's eyes are red a lot these days. Jenna can hear her crying in the bedroom when she gets home from school. Jenna doesn't understand what they're fighting about, but she does know it's getting worse. The other day, Jenna sat under the old sycamore just to get away from her parents yelling in the living room. She hears the things her dad says to her mom, and she tries to remember the last time she saw her mom smile. Every single hour of my life, and it's not good enough to you. It's just not good enough to you. She can't remember. Since her parents started fighting a year ago, it's gotten harder for Jenna to listen in class or to even care about school plays or sporting events or anything. Jenna is scared. If mom and dad keep fighting, is dad gonna go away? Someplace else where he finds another wife, another family, other kids? So you see, Jenna feels like she's drowning. <laughs> Jen is all out of breath. Enter Caitlin. Caitlin sits two rows ahead of Jenna in Mrs. Carter's geography class. She doesn't play volleyball, but she's on the basketball team. And she's in the choir in all Jenna's plays. Joy to the world. Jenna has noticed Caitlin many times, 
All she knows about Caitlin is that she laughs a lot, and she goes to a church on the other side of town. Before Jenna knows it, Caitlin is talking to her about sports, music, boys, school, things she's nervous about. But she keeps talking about God and how God will take care of her no matter what. Jenna asks her to explain what she means by God taking care of her. Caitlin starts to talk about how God made the world, but people sinned. She talks about some guy who walked on water, about a man named Jesus who died for her and came back to life. To Jenna, this sounds a lot like fairy tales. However, Caitlin seems to believe it like it all really happened. Jenna has a lot of questions, so they talk more. They even talk by the old sycamore tree. Really Caitlin tells Jenna that God can live inside her, that he can fill her with his presence, and she can know God. Finally, after weeks of this, out of nowhere, Jenna looks at Caitlin and says, I'm ready. I want Jesus. <laughs> That's when it happens. This story is not about Jenna. This story is about the presence. This is the Holy Spirit in a world full of pain, in a world where people are experiencing the death of broken relationships, loneliness, sickness. The presence brings life where there was no life.